down. This is Loki, and this is Loki's roadmap to success. Um, Loki uh, basically has nipped a couple people, but I don't think he has any aggression issues. I think it was just overstimulated, and uh, in the other situation, he was overly uh, stressed and fearful at the vet, and uh, he was uh, he was communicating it that he was that way at the vet because he did lose control of his bowels. So one of the things I talked to the guardian about is if he is fearful or reluctant, he actually we just did a little exercise up there and he kind of shut down a little bit. If he gives you any of those signs, he's saying I'm uncomfortable. It's a good time to stop, address the situation, and ask yourself what is he afraid of or what is he fearful of, and and then make a note of that and come back. You know what? Uh, like the vet's office, he didn't. He was uncomfortable in the vet. He had. Uh, his testicles didn't drop, and so he had to go in for surgery for that. And so, and he was just uncomfortable. Uh, and was this the incident was he, where he was urinating? Mm -hmm. And so he was uncomfortable, he urinated, and then the, the, the vets kind of still worked with him anyways. And the vet did a good job. I know the vet, they do a good job, but they have to also get through things. They don't know how every dog's going to behave. And so he ended up nipping somebody. And uh, But that's fear. And so uh, we want to take note if our dog is reacting or fearful about that and then come back and figure out a way to fix that. So for the vet office, what I recommend that they do is go back to the vet office like right before closing time or around lunch if they have a slow lunch hour. Not all vet offices do have one of those. And then basically go in there. I would go in there, leave in the car first just for a minute, go in there, give everybody like three or four of these really high value treats and have them come in and just everywhere he goes to and just like, Loki. And I try to ask him to sit or do something first. And then so I just go to this person, they give me a treat, that person gives me a treat, the vet gives me a treat, the receptionist gives me a treat. We go in the exam room, I get more treats. Um, you might want to bring a Kong, uh, with, well, maybe not even a Kong. I would, if you're gonna do like a, a, a serving spoon with some peanut butter smeared on it, a good amount and freeze it, then go in there and bring his dog bed. And say, hey, can we lay out, uh, hang out in one of your exam rooms? They usually have chairs. You sit down, put the and hold it, uh, hold the the spoon here. So get him to lay down on his dog bed and just lick the, all the peanut butter off the spoon, and then you leave. So he goes into the office, has a lot of great positive interactions with people. He lays down, which is a good indication he's, he's comfortable. And then we leave, and nobody touched me. They didn't lift up my ears. They didn't look at my butt. They didn't lift my tail. It was easy. So you do that a couple times and if he's like leaning, like we talked about the lean uh, over, or if he's stiff, or you, your gut tells you he's uncomfortable, keep going back and practicing that. Uh, if you do it right, it shouldn't take more than maybe two to four practices, and he should like going to the vet again. Uh, now, depending on how bad the situation, it might take a little bit more than others, uh, but uh, the idea is to help identify why the dog was fearful or didn't like the situation, and then create a scenario where you can make it a positive association. Uh, now, uh, I think that they're, the guardians here are not abusive in any way, shape, or form, but there have been times where they needed to do things. Like they needed him to go in the kennel and he didn't want to so pick him up and put him in the kennel. Or they kind of devised a really genius way of like closing the door with the kennel door with a rope so they could be over away. Well, or they snatch things away or they pull things out of his mouth. All these things can kind of break the dog's trust in us. They can still love us and trust us, but not have as deep a trust. And so one of the things I went over was how to teach the dog to drop. So when he has an object in his mouth that he's not resource guarding, or uh, just and something that's in his toy box, uh, which is now going to be available all the time, I'm just going to go over and hold the treat out in front of his mouth. He's going to try to take it like that with the object in his mouth. Don't tell him to drop. Just wait. As soon as he drops it, then put the object and put the treat in his mouth. Say the word drop, and then don't show any interest in the item. So you want to practice this or shape this behavior under uh, with low value items, things he's allowed to have at any point. That way, he does if he does get a remote control or a shoe or something like that, you can tell him to drop and he'll just spit anything out for you. Um, a lot of uh, this, I think, was a little bit manifest for fetch. He will bring you the ball, but he doesn't like to drop it. Well, if you go through it in here and after a while have some treats, and so brings you over the ball, hold the treat out, he drops it, put it in his mouth, and this time he would say fetch. After a while, he'll just come and drop and spit the ball right out at you or whatever the object is. Um, and because he has a potential for, uh, I don't know if it's resource guarding or just crumbling when people get near when he has stuff, but he might have a resource guarding problem, and this is a great exercise that will help with that considerably as well. Now remember, if you do have to take the object away from him, uh, so I went over a resource guarding technique, and if you forget how to do that, let me know. I have a video that ex explains all of that in detail. I, don't, I think you guys have it, and it's easy for you guys to do, but if you have questions, let me know. So, um, but basically, let's say he does have something that we actually have to take away from him. Well, if we have a good drop, we say drop and he drops it, then I would drop and then I pull out a bully stick or something like that and I would kind of tease him with a little bit and drop it over there and when he leans over to get it, then I would pick up the other object. So it is a trade. 
I'll make sure it's equal or greater value. So I have to find have something that he really likes. It might be a spoon with some peanut butter on it. For a lot of dogs, that'll work. Uh, but just try to avoid snatching or fooling or tricking him. Um, anytime that he doesn't like something, remember there are ways to make him like that by creating a positive association. So make it the easiest version of that activity. There you go. Um, and have him practice the first step over and over in the easiest capacity until he's just doing that automatically. Then go to step two and then three and so on. Yes, you're being a good boy. Um, all right, so um, let me see. We talked about enforcing rules. Uh, we're talking about exercise first. So remember, you can throw the treats up and down the stairs. Make sure it's an empty stomach the first time. Max them out. So funny name when he licks up the treat when he goes to the bottom of the stairs. Funny name when he, uh, different name means to go up the stairs. And remember, anytime you give him a treat, I don't know if I mentioned this, the treat should always go in the mouth first. He should hear the command word second. That makes him look at the command word or hear the command word more favorably because I have a delicious treat in my mouth every time I hear it. So uh, you're gonna get more in a second. Uh, all right, so um, the stairs, you can throw the treats up and down the stairs. Fetch, if you can get him to drop, is a wonderful way to burn energy. He seemed to be interested in chasing a laser, but he was quasi-interested, so he may or may not. Um, those are all, and coming up with uh, pursuit games, ways for him to burn energy in short little spurts. Uh, concentrated, more intense energy uh, exercise for shorter periods of time uh, can be more effective because it really needs to be done every about two to four hours. Now also, late at night, the Guardian was saying that late at night, um, he went out for a run, uh, and I think it was just too long of a run. He came back and he was overly tired and cranky. So dogs often are, uh, when they get overly tired, do get mouthy. And that's a problem that he has, is he likes to put his paws and his mouth on people um, as a way of asking for things and communicating. We need to understand that there's no circumstance where that's allowed. So anytime that he touches you with his mouth, you a couple different options. Um, best thing to do would be get up and leave the room completely. That's called a negative punishment. But let's say he just he came up to me, I'm watching TV, and he, and he grabbed my arm, and, I'm like, ah! and you see that response. And then I would freeze for a second, and then I put my arms back down and see what he does. You want him to think that he almost hurt you. And this is, a, yes, I know, buddy. That was their demonstration purpose. I did a good, de good job of demoing that, huh? There we go. All right, so um, also keep in mind, if, he, if I pet him when he's fearful, I can make him more fearful aggressive, excited, anything your dog is doing when you pet is what you're specifically amplifying. If he is nervous, you can lay your hand on him and let him know I'm here with you without amplifying, but as soon as you start petting him, you're gonna make it worse. Probably the most common mistake people make with dogs. Um, so the first thing you do is yelp like that. Make it that high-pitched yelp and sound like a little girl. Second thing, uh, and then I freeze for a second when he, when he stops, then I go back to petting him. If he touches me again, then I might yelp again, or I might pull out an antler or a nyla bone or something out of my pocket. Now, if I just give it to him, he's probably not gonna want it. If I pull it out and I tap over here, he goes this way, he like, comes over here, I tap over here, then I tap up here, then I tap down here. I wanna kinda tease him so he's going around for it, then I'm latch, let him latch onto it and pull it away. Then it redirect, we redirect him into truly an appropriate item, and then he goes and takes his trophy and goes and lays down somewhere else. So uh, that's the second thing you do is redirect. The third thing you do is the first thing I mentioned is just get up and leave the room and close the door behind you. So that way you're saying as soon as you put your paw and your teeth on me, I leave. Now a great way to do uh, to practice this would really be you get a couple tug toys and play tug of war with him. And the instant he touches you with his teeth, you yelp and drop the thing and then the game is over. After a while I was like, but I like that game. So I'll learn to play with it without touching you with my teeth. Um, but developing bite inhibition is the number one thing you should do if you have a puppy and if you're an adult dog, especially a bigger dog, really important. Um, and we also talked about uh, rules. The guardians here have more rules than most of my clients do. Most of my clients struggle for about five minutes to realize they have zero rules for the dog. The clients here do have some, uh, his guardians do have some rules, uh, but we augmented a couple more. So like he, he has to sit before I let him out the door. Remember, tell him to sit once. The more you say it, the less you mean it. If he doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away, sit down nearby, ask your Alexa or whatever for a one minute timer, and then go back to the door and command him one time to sit. If he doesn't, this time I'll walk away for two minutes when I'm sitting. Make sure you're seated. The next time I walk away and sit down for four minutes, then for eight minutes. I keep do doubling that length of time until when I go and tell him to sit and he sits down, I fly that door open immediately. After a while, he will sit at the door as his way of asking and go in or out. Then you can do it for both directions, coming in and leaving. Uh, another rule would be that um, he has to stay out of the kitchen when we're preparing food. He also has to stay out of the dining room when we're eating. I went through that exercise on how to do it. If you forgot how to do it, you can always go to doggoneproblems.com. Click on dog training tips and the search box on the right on a laptop or the bottom of the screen for a phone, type in invisible line. 
and, or a kitchen. And I have a bunch of videos that teach you how to keep your, keep your dog behind an invisible line or out of the kitchen. You can watch it and you can always call or text me if you have questions as well. Uh, let me see, what other rules? Um, uh, I think that's, uh, that, the Guardian's already had a lot of the other rules in, in place that I, I have. Um, I love the way the Guardian's make him wait with the door open for permission to exit. That's awesome. Uh, keep doing that. Uh, you might want to also ask him to sit every corner you get to on walks, so it's a good practice for him to do it. Um, and just, uh, I have one dog now that uh, used to run in the street. She loves to play fetch. If I play fetch, she bites the ball. Sometimes she bites it in the wrong, uh, her timing's off, and she kicks it off across the, she runs right to the edge and stops. She will not go in the street because I did this stopping and sitting every time. And she, she'd go get hit by a car. So it's actually something that, even though it's a pain for me, I have to go walk three houses down to get that ball. I do because I don't want her to break that. Remember, breaking a rule is not a good way to reward the dog. Something else we talked about off camera. So uh, let me see. Uh, other things we went over with is petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is if he comes up and paws at me or nudges me. Well, before he gets to that, if I'm petting him and he puts his paw on top of me, I immediately stop petting him. If he paused me a second time, I would get up and leave if necessary. So you have to teach him that he can't tell you what to do. Now, for petting with a purpose, if he comes up and nudges, he's like, you're a bastard. You're telling them all the things that I love to do, and I'm going to have to fix my guardians after you leave. Um, well, basically, petting with a purpose, if he tells me, he nudges me or pauses me for attention, and I pet him, I'm telling him, yes, you're the boss of me. And that can make him feel responsible for me. That can contribute to guarding behaviors. So what I do instead is when he nudges me, I tell him to sit. If he sits within the first three seconds, I pet him under his chin and say, sit. If he doesn't, I turn on the TV, grab my phone, read a magazine, newspaper, do something else in the area. So you show him, look, I wanted to give you my attention, but you couldn't be bothered to sit, so I find other things to do. I have a lot of other things that I can do to make me happy. You're the number one on my list, but if you don't listen, then I go to number two, number three, number four, and so on. After a while, he starts missing that attention. He's going to be more motivated to want to sit, and he will start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for that attention. Remember, when you do pet him, try to pet him under his chin and say just the command word, not good sit, not good boy, and not sit, just sit. Uh, and then pet him once to an infinity number of times. Now, um, after a while, he'll start prepay, sitting to prepay for that attention, and when he does that, make sure you pet him for that, otherwise he will go back to nudging you or pawing you. If he's already sitting when you want to pet him and he's not asking for it, tell him to lay down or tell him to come and sit on this side of you. He, has to just, he either has to prepay for it or do something to earn that, uh, uh, follow one of your commands. Now, um, use the watchword paycheck if you, suspect, if you suspect someone is petting without a purpose. I see a passive training. Passive training is just waiting for him to do things on his own. So every time he comes to you, pet him and say, come. Every time he lays down, pet him and say, down. Every time he eats his food, so come up with a funny word that means to eat food. Call it, you know, whatever, uh, sushi. Uh, and then every time he drinks water, uh, say agua or happy hour or water or whatever you want to say, name all of your individual toys, yawn. That could be another, pa that's passive training right there. You would think that yawn is really not something you need to do, but yawning is actually something dogs do as a calming signal. So if you have another dog and that dog's stressed out and you teach your dog to, crawl, call, to yawn on command, that can actually have an impact on the other dog. But how would you teach your dog to yawn? Passive training. So every time he does things that you want, make sure you recognize and reward him and pet him unless he puts his paw on top of you. So the more you do that, the better vocabulary you're going to have and the more easier it is going to be for you to communicate because he understands what you say. Also, uh, make sure you pull that dog. Uh, right now there's a case of dog, tree, uh, dog toys, but they're on top of the kennel. It's in a plastic container with a lid. I would like to see you put like a container here. Probably here would be the best place. You could probably put it on the table there, but I worry about him knocking it around. Uh, but uh, having him have access to all his toys at the end of every day, pick up all the toys, put them there. If you want to teach him, go to YouTube. You can teach your dog to put his toys back in the basket. That's also a cool thing to do. Um, so the more that uh, he has access to uh, appropriate chew items, the better. Uh, you might want to supplement it by getting a water buffalo horn. I would also get him a couple wheel bones, a couple antlers, um, and then you can you know get different uh, uh, nylon bones of different shapes and colors, like shapes and uh, flavors, I should say. Um, all right, um, let me see. We went over the escalating consequences to disagree with unwanted behaviors. Do not use those if he is uh, in a resource guarding mode or aggressive. Any confrontation when he's in a resource guarding mode is going to make it worse. So remember, just watch that video and let me know if you have any questions for that. Oh, you're going to touch me with your mouth a little bit? <laughs> so he is a little bit sensitive. Sit. Sit. So uh, again, I think that Yelp is really going to help because he really responds to it pretty well. Also, uh, arrange to have friends come over. 
and because he kind of likes to fixate and follow a person. So have a friend come over and practice. You might want to learn how to teach him to stay. It's a video I have on my website as well. And teach him to stay or just don't allow him up the stairs and have your friend come over and practice being upstairs. Having him practice uh, having a little bit of distance between them can really help. Now the video, the first one we have is, uh, before I even came in the house, is how to teach him to be calm at the door. That's really a form of operant conditioning. So what we do is when the dog starts displaying behaviors we don't want, that's when we stop or correct him. Uh, really more stopping, uh, engaging with him. And when he does things that we want, uh, Loki, there you go, buddy. So that would have been sit. That would have been a good opportunity to use that out command that, I, that Anna showed you. Um, but the more, uh, for operant conditioning, what we want to do is set up scenarios where he can only do a couple options. One of them is what we want, and if he does that, we reward him richly, but we don't tell him to do it. We let him stumble across that on his own. The other way we do it, uh, or, and if he does anything else, nothing happens. So after a while, he's like, well, choices, do something that, the human, that gets me a reward or do something else. Now the dog's going to start be emulating the behaviors and the activities that you want. All right. Do you have any other questions, buddy? Look at that tail going down. That means you're pretty relaxed. Come here. Make a list of those official command words. Remember to say vocabulary. I just said come here, but his command words probably come, right? Yeah. So if you see, and also when people reach to pet him, uh, remember uh, if he's out and about and you don't want anybody to talk to him or pet him, just tell him, you know, he's, uh, he's a service dog in training or training to be a therapy dog. People will step backwards. But what I always do when I reach to pet a dog and what I would have you have your guests do, if they want to pet him, ask him, uh, Loki, sit. So have them do this. Have them reach this far and stop. See how he came and took that last 10%? That's his way of saying, I want you to pet me. So people start reaching out to him and they turn and they go like this. If he turns his head to the side or backs up or lowers his head, that's his way of saying, I don't want you to pet me. And if that person then pulls their hand back, that person's listening to me. That person's respecting what I want. That makes them more empowered. A lot of dogs learn that nip is a good way to redirect, and the guardian's using the escalating consequences to stop from getting on the furniture. And she redirected him into a positive thing. She asked him to sit. Now she's going to put him under his chin, say sit, and grab a seat, and then ask him to L-A-Y. Okay, Loki down. Now Loki's kind of for forcing his way through. He's like, well, there's three people here. They can all pet me. But again, this is with uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Now, if he kisses your face like that, if you like it, you might call it smoochies or make out city or kisses or suck face or whatever you want to say. So now he has a command word. I actually have kisses and I have love. Love means to come and lick my nose right here. Kisses just means kiss my face anyway. So uh, remember, you can use that passive training. Every time he kisses you, pet him and say kisses or smoochies or whatever you want to say. And the more often you do that, the more likely he's going to listen to you. Now, if you want him to listen to you, I'm going to have you go like this. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to watch. He's right over there. Loki. So it looks like I have a treat in my hand. So I'm going to lower it to make it more appealing to him. Well, don't ever try to compete with the nose. He's sniffing where my shoes have been. Loki. To make him sit, I raise an arc over his head. And then I lower it and I tickle him. If I had a treat, I'd let him lick it off and I tickle him. Remember, always pet him under the chin whenever possible. So if I do this exercise, Loki, sit, sit. So remember, treat goes in the mouth, here's the word sit, and then I tickle under the chin. Eventually, if you go like this, he'll be like, oh, holy cow, that looks like he's got a treat for me. You're blocking my camera. I'm about to sign off. Can we sit? That's a down, but we'll take it down. Well, this is Loki, and this is Loki's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. Right, buddy?